Greetings, viewers. You're watching English News Broadcast, live from our headquarters in Asmara. It's 10.30 p.m. Saturday, live July 17th, and I'm the reporter, Mira Mehuanes. Here's a rundown of the top stories we're covering. Dendon Commercial School graduates 852 students. Activity assessment meeting in Ansaba region. South African president says riots over Zuma jailing pre-planned. President Biden says social media is killing people with COVID-19 misinformation. Here are the details for the local news. In its 19th commencement, Dendon Commercial School graduated 852 students, including 606 girls in certificate. The students graduated in the fields of bookkeeping, secretarial science, business management, and library science. Indicating that vocational training has significant contribution in the nation-building process, Mr. Haptagar Gistedros, director of the school, said that the government of Eritrea is making substantial investment in human resources development. Mr. Haptagergis also called on the graduates to practically develop their skill and play due part in the implementation of the nation development drives. Mr. Maashwa Gavartinsay, head of supervision and quality control at the Ministry of Education, commending the graduates for the commitment they demonstrated during their stay at the school, reminded them to become exemplary in the place of assignment. The representative of the students on his part, commending for the opportunity they were provided, expressed conviction to live up to their expectation. The Ansaba Region Administration conducted activity assessment on the 12th and 13th July with limited representation of heads of departments and subzonal administrations. According to report presented at the meeting, in the past 18 months, new health facilities have been put in places in Karan City, in Kertz at Hal Hal subzone, and in Adirba al Aberat subzone. Regarding agricultural development, the reporter indicated that in 2020, improved crop seeds were distributed to exemplary farmers in Atte Kelezan subzone and that farmers have collected bounty harvest. The participants of the meeting conducted extensive discussion on the report presented and adopted various recommendations, including for reinforced effort to develop teaching and learning process, strong follow-up on the safety of roads, finding solution for the low female participation in junior and high schools, as well as to ensure the participation of the public in the development programs calling for integrated effort in the implementation of the charted out development programs, Mr. Abdullah Musa, governor of the region, expressed readiness of the regional administration to play due part in all endeavors. The Eritrean cycling team departed to Japan today to participate at the Tokyo Olympics 2020 that is due to take place from 23 July to 8 August. The national team that is coached by Samsung Salomon includes athletes Merhawi Kudus, Aman El Gabrez Gabiher, and Mosana Debesai. Athlete Mosana Debesai is making history for becoming the first black African female cyclist to participate at the Olympics. According to the Commission of Culture and Sports, the remaining athletes that will participate in track, marathon, and 10,000 meters will depart on 24 and 30 July. Eritrea will participate in the Olympics in three sports competition, including athletics, cycling, and swimming, and is fielding 13 athletics, if, including five females. I'll be back with the international news after a short break. Welcome back. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has said the violence that has rocked the country was pre-planned, describing it as an assault on democracy. The president also said that the riots were an attempt to hijack South Africa's democracy. He told report supporters that instigators had been identified and more than 2,500 people had been arrested in connection with the unrest. The death toll that has risen to 212 up by almost 100 since Thursday the government said. 
police officers have been protecting deliveries of food to supermarkets after days of widespread looting led to shortages. In a 30-minute televised address later on Friday, Mr. Ramaphosa said there was no shortage of food or supplies and urged people to against panic buying. Protests began last week after Zuma handed himself into the police to serve a 15-month sentence for contempt of court. Zuma's supporters reacted furiously to his imprisonment, blockading major roads and calling for a shutdown to demand his release. The protesters descended into riots on a scale rarely seen in South Africa. Businesses in every sector were looted, burnt and patrol bombed in cities and towns across KwaZulu-Natal as well as Gauteng, which surrounds the biggest city, Johannesburg. Misinformation about the virus and vaccine had spread on platforms including Facebook and Twitter. President Joe Biden has said that social media companies are killing people by failing to police misinformation on their platforms about COVID-19 vaccines. Biden's comments came a day after U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy about the vaccines a threat to public health. Speaking on Thursday, Murthy said misinformation about COVID-19, deemed an infodemic by the World Health Organization, was deadly. Facebook spokesperson Danny Lever responded that they will not be distracted by accusations which aren't supported by facts. Twitter also posted on its platform, as the COVID-19 pandemic evolves around the world, they will continue to do their part to elevate authoritative health information. Given the role the Internet plays in spreading health misinformation, Murthy said technology companies and social media platforms must make meaningful change to their products and software, to reduce the spread of false information while increasing access to authoritative fact-based sources. Rescue crews have been racing to find survivors of floods that have wrecked havoc across Western Europe, killing more than 150 people. Hundreds are still missing after recurrent rainfall triggered severe floods in Germany and Belgium. Heavy rains also hit Switzerland, Luxembourg and the Netherlands, where Prime Minister Mark Rutte has declared a national disaster in one southern province, where European leaders have blamed the extreme weather on climate change. In Germany, where the death toll stands at over 100, President Frank-Walter Steinmeier said he was stunned by the devastation ahead of a visit to a flood-hit region. Phone networks are down, roads are badly damaged and more than 100,000 homes are without power. The states of North Rhine-Westphalia, Rhineland-Palatinate and Saarland have been the worst affected by the rainfall. In Rhineland-Palatinate's district of Arloire, officials had said about 1,300 people were missing on Friday, but added that the figure was decreasing every hour. Scientists have been predicting for years that summer rainfall and heat waves would become more intense due to human-induced climate change, saying governments must both cut the carbon dioxide emissions that are fueling extreme events and prepare for more extreme weather. In Belgium, the army that has been sent to four of the country's ten provinces to help with the rescue and evacuations. Rescue workers from France, Italy and Australia have been sent to the city of Liege, where residents were evacuated after flash floods. Meanwhile, in the Netherlands, thousands of people fled their homes in Nuremberg provinces as rising water swamped cities and broke through a dike. In Switzerland, lakes and rivers were also swelling after heavy rainfall. The river running through the Swiss capital Bern burst its banks on Friday. Lake Lucerne is flooding into the town and people in Basel have been told to keep well away from the river Rhine. Following is a recap of the headlines of tonight's news. Dandan Commercial School graduates 852 students. Activity assessment meeting in Ansaba region. South African president says riots over Zuma jailing pre planned President Biden says social media is killing people with COVID-19 misinformation. That was all for today. Again, I'm Miriam Johannes. Thanks for watching.